Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jay once again, and we are up to video number 13 in my Python series. Time is just flying by. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to capture user input. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open a new script in a text editor here. I'm just uh, gonna open up input.py, which at this time is just an empty file. And I'm gonna go ahead and start this program just the same as I would with any other by creating my little hash bang here at the beginning, which will set the environment to Python 3. And then I'm going to enter a simple print statement. So I'll do print and then in the quotes here, I'll do enter your name close the quotes, parentheses, and in the next line, I'm going to ask for input. So how do I do that? So what I want to do is use the input function, which actually looks like that. But what I'm going to do in particular is create a variable to store that information called name. And I'm going to set that equal to the input function. So what that's going to do is accept whatever the user enters in and it's going to store that in a variable called name. So in the final line here, I'm just gonna go ahead and print the current value of that variable. So I'll go ahead and save it, and then we'll run it. So dot forward slash input dot py, and it's asking me to enter my name. I will do that, I'll enter that in, press enter, and it just basically echoes that back to the shell. So not very useful. It just illustrates how this process actually works. Now, even though it's asking for name, uh, we could simply type anything there. I could type a number, you know, for example, and it works just as well. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at that program and make sure we understand how it works. So I'm setting the environment, as you know, and there's nothing special about this print statement. And then here, like I mentioned already, it's simply accepting input from the user and storing it in the name value or variable, which I simply uh, print to the shell right here. Now, I can actually consolidate this program a little bit. Now, there's only three lines of actual code here, so you could argue there's really no need to simplify this, but we wanna get into that mindset because simplifying your code and having as few of lines as you can in your program is the most important thing to learn and uh, less is more when it comes to code. So if you could do the same thing in less code, you may as well. So how can we shorten this? So this input function right here actually will accept a string right here inside the parentheses. So I could simply do enter your name right there and then simply get rid of this line. If I save the file, let's see how it changes. Let me go ahead and run that again. We can already see something is a little different here. It's asking me to enter my name, but it's allowing me to type on that same line. And again, it's just doing essentially the same thing, but what we can do to make it look a little nicer is add a little line break right here. So when we actually run it, it looks a little bit cleaner, but it essentially does the same thing, but with only two lines of code. And now that we have the name in a variable, we can actually utilize that in any other Python function or object. So what I could simply do is print a sentence that includes that variable. So I could do something like this, print your name is, so I'm just basically printing a string, nothing surprising there, but I'm gonna concatenate and have it also print the output of the name variable as well. So I'll go ahead and close the parentheses. So I actually can just get rid of this line right here. So when I run it this time and type in the information, you can see that it's a little bit more user friendly. Again, nothing surprising there, but uh, just to show you now that we have that variable, we captured that, we can use it anywhere else we'd like to. So now that we have this variable and we are utilizing it in a print statement, there is a potential problem that is most likely going to happen. And in a previous video when we were talking about converting data types, I mentioned that you might run into an actual situation where you might need to convert data from one format to another. For example, maybe a string into an integer or vice versa. Right now, this works just fine because when the user is asked to enter their name, the name variable is actually storing a string. The print, uh, the print function here is basically printing a string 
and then it's printing a variable that also contains a string. So, so far the data type matches everywhere, but that's not always going to be the case. So what I'm going to do right now is change up this program a little bit, and then I'll explain a situation where we might need to convert data that the user has input into a different format. All right, so I went ahead and added a lot more to this program here. And rather than just uh, you know have you watch me type all this, I just wanted to get it typed out for you. And what I'm gonna do now is just explain what I'm doing. And I'm gonna give you a warning, this program will not run. So if you were to pause the video right now and, and actually jot this down and run it yourself, it's going to fail. And I'll explain why in a minute. But let, let's just explain what I'm actually doing. So I changed all the occurrences of the word name to age. The first part isn't all that much different. It's just basically um, we're creating a variable named age and that's where we're storing the input in that variable. We're just asking the user to enter their age and then it's printing you are and then whatever their age years old. And this right here will work just fine because it's accepting the input in a string and it's printing it as a string basically sandwiched between two other strings. So this part is fine. But can you see where we went wrong here or why this program will fail? Pause the video if you need to, to see if you could find the problem. I think I actually just gave it away anyway. And uh, the problem is that there are unlike data types. So let's go ahead and run it and you'll see the error for yourself. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the script and I'll put in a random number here for the age and we get a, an exception. It's basically telling me that there's a type error that um, it needs to be a string, not integer. So what's going on here? So um, in the program, I'm creating a new variable and I'm calling it age2 and I'm setting it equal to whatever the current value of age is plus 50. So if the user entered 20, then it should actually make this 70. But the problem is age is actually a string when we captured it here. It's a string and you can't add an integer and a string together and expect to get a number like 70 because they're unlike data types. So we actually have two problems in this script, but let's go ahead and solve the first one, then we'll move on to the next one. So as we did in a previous video, we can convert this. So int for integer. So I'm basically gonna add 50 to whatever the integer version of the age variable is and store the result in age two. So this part should be fine. Let's go ahead and run it again. I'll put in 20. And we actually can see right here that it's still, there's still a problem and I knew there would be. So um, what is the actual problem? Now age two is actually an integer and we're trying to print it here inside a string which we can't do so again we just basically do the opposite we set the answer equal to a string or we convert it to a string and then it should work just fine let's go ahead and test that out I'll put in 20 again you are 20 years old in 50 years you will be 70 years old so uh, basically so far Go ahead and put a space right here as well, again, just to make it look cleaner so everything isn't jumbled together. But we went ahead and fixed the problem. So uh, again, what we're doing here on the first line, as you already know, we're creating a variable called age and we're capturing input to set whatever that variable is. And the input function allows us to put some text right here in a string in the quotes to basically tell the user what it is that we want them to enter. And then on the next line, it's simply printing the string you are, and then whatever the user entered, and then years old. And then here we need to set a new variable because we just want to add 50 years to their age. Why? Well, because we can. And in order to make this work, we need to convert temporarily age to be an integer so that we can add it to 50 and then store the result in age two. And the final line though, we need to print it. In order to print it, it needs to be a string. So since we have a string here, we're adding or concatenating a string um, well, actually, the value of age two is what we want to print, but we need to print it as a string in order for this to work, and that does function just fine. Now, we do have another problem in this script that I'm not going to show you how to solve in this video, but I actually will show you how to solve it in a future video. And you probably already know this, and maybe you paused the video and tried this yourself, but what happens if the user enters something that 
that you, you didn't really think they were going to enter. So if I was to go ahead and run this script, and it's asking me for my age, but I, no, I'm not reading it, so I'm just going to put my name instead. It's going to crash. It's going to have another value error because now what we're doing is we are entering information that is not quite what the program expected. Now to solve that, we actually need to do a little bit of error handling, which we can cover in a future video. But you know, the nature of users of any program is that you tell them to do something, they're going to do something completely different. It's just the way it works. And there's logic you could build into the program to basically uh, make it handle situations such as those. But I just want you to be aware that there is a way to handle that type of thing. But for right now, the only weakness of our program is that if the user enters something unexpected, it'll crash. But as long as they follow directions, it will work. So that's basically all there is for input for now. We'll revisit this as we're probably, probably going to revisit you know, pretty much everything that we've covered so far. But uh, for the purposes of this video, I think that's good enough. So um, go ahead and move on to the next video, which has already been uploaded, and uh, we'll continue on from there. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. And if you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the show notes below this video, where I have a link to my Patreon page, as well as an Amazon store, where I have a listing of hardware that I've personally tested myself to be compatible with Linux. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And I look forward to making more videos for you guys very soon. Thanks again. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. And if you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the show notes below this video, where I have a link to my Patreon page, as well as an Amazon store, where I have a listing of hardware that I've personally tested myself to be compatible with Linux. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And I look forward to making more videos for you guys very soon. Thanks again.